Hey, how are you? This is Perry Jeffries, the Entrepreneur CFO. Hey, welcome. Uh, today our presentation is on how to reset your wealth, moving from surviving to thriving during the pandemic. Let's get started. All right, so let's do a quick poll. Who watching this wants to be wealthy? Put your hands in the air. Higher. All right, great. Hopefully everybody's hand went up. If not, you need to stop watching this video now. No, I'm just playing. You can stay. Just kidding. When I was first asked to speak on this topic, I cringed at the word wealth. I quite frankly hate the use of it. The word wealth is used daily on social media, in conversations, in advertising. Every time you turn around, hey, this is how you create wealth. Hey, we, we're the wealthy creators. Hey, I'm striving for wealth. Hey, my life revolves around wealth. You hear it everywhere. Everybody wants it. Or everybody has a suggestion or product or service on how to get it. But what exactly is it? this wealth that everyone seems to have an opinion on so let's start here what is your definition of wealth stop for a second literally stop what you're doing write it down type it down put it in your phone what's your definition of wealth even more importantly how do you measure it how do you know when you've gone from not having wealth to achieving wealth so one what's your definition two how do you measure it when do you know exactly the point in time when you've achieved it? If you're watching this via the webinar, type your answers in the chat. Perfect. Now, I've been asked this question thousands of times, um, just literally thousands of times over my two decades of advising businesses and clients uh, on their finances and giving, shoot, probably by this time, you know, thousands of presentations. So I always ask this question before I start. And every time I ask this question, I typically hear maybe a few ideas or theories, never anything concrete. Usually I hear crickets, complete silence. So how can something that's so popular to talk about, everybody talks about it, and something that everyone seems to aspire to uh, achieve because everybody's hand went up, right? When I asked the question, who wants to achieve wealth? Be so hard for people to define. Let that sink in, for, think and sink in for a second. If you raised your hand and said, yes, I want to be wealthy. Yes, I want to achieve wealth. But then if I ask you how do you define it and how you measure it and you drew a blank, how can you possibly achieve it? If you can't define or measure a goal, then it is virtually impossible to achieve. So I was asked to give you guys some tips and tools to help you move forward in your finances to go from uh, surviving and thriving and help you reset your wealth. Well, I'm actually going to do you uh, one better because we realize right now we all need some assistance and some help navigating the pandemic and moving from surviving to thriving. So I'm going to give you something much more valuable. I'm going to give you crystal clarity on how to define and measure this thing called wealth. So make sure you grab pen and paper. Let's get to it. So your definite, what's your definition of wealth, how you should measure it? Well, here is how we believe you should measure it. This right here is a picture of a calculator and a watch. See, we believe that wealth literally, from a definition standpoint, is if you were to stop doing whatever it is you do to make money, so whatever that is, so whether you're a doctor, whether you're a school teacher, whether you're an entrepreneur, well, um, whether it doesn't even matter. Whatever it is that you do to make money, to earn an income, how long would you be able to maintain your quality of life if you stop working today? So let's look at this again. Would you look at the calendar or would you be looking at the stopwatch? How long would you be to maintain your quality of life? So wealth is actually equal to time. Wealth is not a million dollars in your account. Wealth is not all your debt being paid. Wealth is actually a unit of time. How long can you maintain your quality of life if you were to stop working today? Is that time measured in days, measured in months, measured in years? Shoot, is it measured in minutes? Anyway, you want to always understand at any given point in time how many units of wealth you currently have. 
So here's an equation for you. Let's take ownership divided by monthly expenses equal time. Well, Perry, what in the world is ownership? Here's the deal. I was once speaking to a, um, a good friend of mine who's a uh, multimillionaire in the D.C. area. Uh, worth, I think, right now, it was close to what, four or $500 million um, in real estate and actually pretty liquid as well with another about $50 million in cash. And we were having this conversation, and I asked him, I said, man, so, so what is wealth to you? He said, wealth is simply ownership. You have to make a decision on what it is you're going to own. So ownership can be real estate. Ownership can be a business. Ownership can be your cash. You own your cash. That's your cash. Ownership could be investments. Maybe you choose to have paper assets like stocks or mutual funds or retirement accounts or things of that nature, things that you actually own. So ultimately, wealth is a reflection of ownership. OK, so the definition for uh, the equation for wealth is we take the ownership. So the things that you own cash investments real estate potentially passive income well perry how do you own passive income hey you may have worked you know 20 years for a company and have a monthly pension coming in you own that income you may be receiving social security you own that income so things that you have ownership on ownership of all right so you take that ownership divide that by your monthly expenses well perry how do i know what my monthly expenses are well that's part of the issue why we're just having so, so much issue creating wealth you need to know exactly what your monthly expenses are down to almost the penny so we uh, def uh, define monthly expenses as 100 percent of your lifestyle costs not just hey my rent and my mortgage and my car note and groceries but no if you like to travel if you get a haircut if you get your nails done things of that nature everything that goes into your lifestyle cost is your monthly expenses when you take your ownership which you have ownership of divided by monthly expenses it's going to give you time either minutes days weeks months a year and that is how you define wealth but well, that's how you measure wealth so check it out here's an example let's say that you have five thousand dollars in a bank or you have five thousand dollars worth of investments okay and you sit down, you work your budget, and you realize you have $3,000 in monthly expenses. Well, 5000 divided by 3000 is 1.7 months. You have 1.7 months of wealth. Same scenario. Let's say you have 100000 between your cash and your retirement account, and your monthly expenses are, you know, 3500 But well, then you have 28.6 months of wealth. Or 2.4 years of wealth. So those are your units of wealth. So I ask you again. How much wealth do you have? You know, so do you so run it, pull out your calculator here and run a quick estimate. Know how many units of wealth do you have as you're watching this video? Okay. Now, some people are gonna be like, man, Perry, I got uh I got about a year. Or you know, sometimes I, I hear those rare cases where somebody says to me, Oh, Perry, you know what? I got about twenty to ten to twelve years right now. Or, you know, hey, Perry, I got a month, you know, 30 days. Somebody, oh, hey, Perry, I got a week. And ultimately, somebody in the room is going to be thinking to, them, thinking to themselves, literally, Perry, I have about 24 hours of wealth. And that's, and that's okay, but we need, to, you know, we need to understand where you are so that we can start creating wealth. So, again, how do you define it and how do you measure it? So, how much wealth, again, do you have? Calculate that now. So here's the truth about the tent pandemic, and I know this uh, uh, may may hurt some people's feelings. Again, um, I'm not here to you know make friends. I'm here to actually help you out. So I, I'm just going to give it to you straight with no chaser. Here's the deal: the truth about the pandemic and your money is simply this: you probably, more than likely, already had a money issue prior to the pandemic. Okay. What the pandemic did is just expose what the money issue were. You were either already overspending you are either not bringing in enough income you are you already either had too many expenses or you weren't tracking your money uh you weren't measuring your units of wealth uh you were telling people like yeah i'm, I, I, I'm all about wealth but you had no idea how to define it how to measure it how to achieve it so the what the pandemic did was just expose the issue that was already there so if you found yourself in panic mode after, you know, losing your income, your job or your business slowing after 30 days and you're like, oh, my goodness, I'm gonna have to close my doors or file bankruptcy or I need help to stay afloat. That wasn't a pandemic issue. That was a money manage money management issue that already existed. So you couple that with not without uh, with not having a crystal clear definition or measurement of what wealth is. 
because before the pandemic hit, you should have already been purchasing units of wealth anyway. So again, it's not about resetting your wealth. It's getting crystal clear on what wealth is and what you need to do to achieve it and having just a very simple way to approach it. One thing that one of my mentors says all the time is always to find the most simplest direct path to a goal. But understand, y'all, let me keep it totally 100 with you. There's no judgment here because I know that may have stung. I've been here before as well. So during the Great Recession of 2007 to 2009, I lost everything. I lost it all. So I went from, you know, being this, you know, powerful stockbroker at, at the largest wealth management firm in the world with a $4 million real estate portfolio to losing absolutely everything during the market crash of 2007 to 2009. And you may ask, like, how did that happen, Perry? Guess what? Though I knew how to go out and acquire real estate, though I knew you know uh, how to invest monies and stocks and bonds and mutual funds and retirement plans at that time I didn't understand the core principles of wealth so fortunately you have me here today and I'm gonna give it to you so first core principle of wealth and it's gonna sound crazy is budget but ultimately you can't even have a conversation about creating wealth until you've sat down and done your budget. Now, typically when people hear the word budget, they cringe because it's like, oh, this is going to be restrictive. It's going to stop you from doing stuff. No, budget actually gives you um, um, the, the opportunity to do things that you want to do, right? It gives you permission to do the things that you want to do. So a budget is simply this. You need to know exactly what your cash flow is. You need to know to the penny how much money is coming in to your household and to the penny how much is going out of your household. Looking at every expense and being crystal clear on what that number is all the time. Because when you do that, that's the foundation of creating wealth. And now you can identify different things that you can do or identify where you may have some gaps. So budget is the key. Number one. Number two is cash flow. Budget and cash flow are not the same thing. So now that you have a budget, which means you actually have a document written in paper, or if your handwriting is horrible like mine, you got it on an Excel spreadsheet, whatever works for you. But next thing is cash flow. Is your, are you cash flow negative or a cash flow positive? And you got to look in your mirror and see exactly where you are. So if you're a cash flow negative, that means that you have more money going out than you have coming in. You just may not realize it because it hits at different times of the month. And then you put a little something on the credit card and not really realize that you don't have that money on hand. Whatever the case may be, get crystal clear on your class cash flow. The first thing to do is to get positive on your cash flow uh, by any means necessary. So a lot of times I hear folks say, well, Perry, you know, I, I'm, I'm um." You know, I don't have enough money coming in. What should I do? Go make more money. Okay. So here's the deal. Um, I, I know that sounds um, kind of dry and, and, and to it, but here's the deal. It's not a rocket science. If you have negative cash flow, you have two choices. Reduce your expenses, figure out how to go make more money. Those are your two options. Now, there are some creativity things that you can do uh, as far as starting a home-based business and getting some additional tax deductions, which could potentially increase your income at your job. That's when you need to sit down and talk to an expert who actually knows how to navigate that particular space. But that's what cash flow is. All right. So are you negative or positive cash flow? We first first thing we need to do is get positive cash flow. Even if it's one dollar positive cash flow, we need to get into a positive cash flow position. Then we have debt management. All right. So if you have debt, which the majority of Americans do, so whether it's, you know, student loan debt or, you know, debt on a car or credit card debt, whatever the case may be, you have to have a crystal clear path and plan on how to eliminate debt because that debt is impacting your cash flow. If you're paying out a thousand dollars a month in debt and, and you only make three thousand and, and, and things of that nature, you're paying out a third of your revenue, third of your income to debt. So we want to have a crystal clear plan on how to get rid of debt. Number three is where I killed myself on the real estate side. So yeah, I was going out to buying all kind of property and I was the man and I was the landlord and all of that stuff and I had an all white Jaguar, I had an all white navigator, you know, just living on top of the world. But what I didn't do is manage my debt the right way because I was going out and putting more and more loans on my property. So yes, did I have a $4 million real estate uh, portfolio? Absolutely I did. 
but I, but what people don't know, I also had almost three million dollars. Now, not almost. I had over three million dollars in mortgage debt. OK, so on paper, I could power myself and say, yes, I'm a millionaire on paper. Four million dollars in assets, three million dollars in, in debt. Right. But when the market started to crash and the values of those properties drop and we had to look at refinancing properties and and getting um, uh, finances from banks, my value of my properties dropped because I didn't own them outright. I had debt on them. And when that happened, everything crumbled, right? So my $4 million portfolio went to about a $2 million portfolio, but that debt didn't reduce. So now I'm negative $1 million worth of net worth, okay? So debt management is super important. And also, too, y'all understanding what ownership is. So, yeah, I had real estate, but did I own it? No. <laughs> Everybody like, oh, man, would you own all that real estate? No, 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 no. The bank owned all that real estate. I was paying the bank for the right to own it in the future. That's what a mortgage is. You don't own it. The bank owns it. You're borrowing from the bank. The bank actually bought it. You borrow from the bank. And now you're uh, uh, usually on a 15 or 30 year uh, payment plan to eventually have 100 percent ownership. So understand what 100 percent ownership is. It's when you have total control over how that asset is going to be invested or bought and sold. So that's when it got me crystal clear and I started to understand what my guy was talking about in D.C. when he talked about uh, wealth being ownership. So those are your four components. So if you've been impacted by the pandemic, which most of us have, and your income may have been cut or you may have lost your job or laid off or whatever the case may be, this is an opportune time to get crystal clear on these four components right so again it's not a rocket science but it does require two things effort and math it comes down to are you going to take the time to sit down and understand your math and put pen to paper so it's not a rocket science y'all again it's just understanding your numbers it's effort and math sitting down and understanding how you know, much money you have coming in, sitting down, writing out your budget, sitting down and, and identifying what you have ownership on. So is that your, your 401k? You own that, right? You know, it may be through the company, but those investments is your money. You own it. Your savings accounts, your money market accounts, you know, um, you know, those are things that you own. So when we talk about wealth, again, we're talking about that ownership. Let's get crystal clear. So as far as tips and tools, here you go. Y'all ready? This is what you need to go grab. A calculator and a calendar would do just just fine. A lot of times folks try to complicate it and make it sound like it's a, you know, a rocket science and it's, you know, it's so hard for us to understand. Nope, it's not. Grab a calculator and a calendar and let's get to work. So knowing how much income is coming in and how much is going out in expenses to the penny. So again, pen and paper. Excel spreadsheet, calculator, download your back bank transaction. That's a real easy way. If you run everything through a debit card or a credit card or a combination of both, go in and just download your transactions for the month. You know, download your transactions, copy and paste that onto an Excel spreadsheet and put that up against your income and see, you know, exactly kind of where your budget is, what you need to cut loose, what you need to keep. What I found with this pandemic when times got really, really tough because it hit our family as well, where my wife went from making really good income to making zero because she's a massage therapist and wasn't able to work for about 60 days, was when we looked at the budget, we got crystal clear on what was a necessity versus what was a want. And we made sure all of our necessities were dialed in and we had the best rates on everything and things that were wants. We went ahead and cut them out. So in this order, budget, save, invest. Know your budget. Understand your cash flow. So get into a habit of saving. After you get into a habit of saving and you have at least three months of, 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 of reserve set aside, now you can have a conversation about investing. Okay. Now. It goes in this order. There are some times when that order may change as far as to save and invest. Maybe they may save and maybe we go with save and invest around the same time if you have opportunity to invest in like a 401k or something at your job. But budget, save, invest. Next we have right here, which I think is super important, y'all. Opinions, information, advice. Well, Perry, you know, I want to go from, you know, you know kind of understanding this to implementation. Well, you have people's opinions. 
this is how I feel about people's opinions. I take people's opinions and I throw them in the trash. Your opinion has no uh, impact on my personal situation. Your opinion is based upon your ex personal experience on a topic or situation. And you sharing that with me is not giving me any direction on my personal situation. So I typically take people's opinions and I throw them in the trash. Um, information wise, information is based upon actual factual data, right? Something that can be proven. It's important that you get information. Uh, now, here's the deal. What's the difference between information and advice? I really haven't given you guys any advice today. I've given you information. Advice is when you actually work with an expert with a proven track record who can take information and present it to you in a way that's customized towards your specific need. So it's not a cookie cutter scenario. It's actually getting advice based on your situation and all the variables of your life. So make sure we don't get caught into making life life uh life decisions based on opinions make sure we're gathering solid information based on factual data that can be proven and make sure we get any advice from experts who have a proven track record of the desired result that you're looking for moving right along take advantage of the crisis y'all i get it the cri this pandemic has been painful it caught us off guard we weren't aware for it, but guess what? This is not the only crisis we're going to experience in our lifetime. It was 2007, 2009 when we experienced the mortgage crisis, when we experienced you know, the stock market crash. That was a crisis. We had another crisis in 2000, 2003. If people don't remember that, we had a recession. You know, We had the uh, black market, stock market crash in 1987. We had 9-11. Um, you know, so crises are going to happen. You need to always be positioned for a crisis. So you need to move from the standpoint of, hey, I'm going to be prepared for the, you know what I'm saying, prepare for the worst and position for the best. So don't let, so take advantage of this, of this crisis as an opportunity to get your house in order. The budget you create in these times will be the budget you need to create wealth in the future. Let that sink in and let that resonate. The budget you create in this time will be the budget you need to create wealth in the future. If you can get lean now and keep things afloat in times of scarcity, in times of abundance, you are going to kill it because you already know how to manage what you currently have. And that's actually biblical scripture. So, hey y'all, reset your wealth today. And thank you for you know joining us for this short video. By the way, let me probably introduce myself. Uh, save this for the end because it's not. This isn't what's important. What's really important is the uh, information I provided. But if you were curious who the messenger was, hey, my name is Perry. I have 17 years, almost two decades in the financial service industry and advising clients and businesses. I've held three positions with Fortune 500 companies. I've held a Series 7 stockbroker's license, a Series 66 investment advisory license, and a life health and annuities license. In addition to that, um, I have the designation of a chartered retirement planning counselor through the College of Financial Planning. By their standard, I'm an expert when it comes to um, asset management and retirement planning for individuals. I also have a CPFA, Certified Plan Fiduciary Advisor, through the National Association of Plan Advisors. Under their uh, standards, I'm an expert when it comes to retirement plans for businesses, i.e. 401ks, 403bs, uh, things of that nature. I'm also a certified Profit First professional, so uh, graduate from the School of Profit First. Um, and understanding the methodology around how to create profitability in businesses. I'm one of about 350 Profit First professionals in the United States of America and the only one who is actually a fully licensed financial advisor. Uh, typically, that uh, certification is sought after by bookkeepers and CPAs. Had the opportunity to work with Damon John, our favorite uh, shark on Shark Tank and founder of FUBU, as one of his ambassadors when he launched his Rise and Grind book and also a John Maxwell certified speaker and coach. You may have seen us featured on ABC or our, or our standing segment on Fox 28 called Financially Fit Fridays with Perry. And I'm a standing speaker uh, third year in a row with the Ohio Society of CPAs, as well as taking the national stage at the uh, American Institute of CPAs. We've managed uh, personally uh, over $80 million in client assets and have worked with hundreds of clients across the country. So that's who I am. Please follow us on Facebook. Uh, at the ECFO or LinkedIn, Perry Jeffries, um, Instagram, Perry Jeffries, ECFO. Definitely jump on our YouTube uh, at Perry Jeffries uh, and follow us on your uh, favorite podcast uh, venue with Profitology with Perry Jeffries. On there, we actually have a 
uh, COVID-19 survival kit series uh, on there where we just uh, give away a ton of uh, valuable information as it pertains to the pandemic and navigating your finances um, around that whole piece. And if you want to, like, want to reach out and contact us, you can contact us at info at diamondequityadvisors.com. Uh, reach out to and reach out and email us and somebody on our team will follow up with you and be sure to visit perryjeffries.com where we have again a bunch of free content on there for you so i hope you enjoyed this and it was beneficial to you and look forward to connecting with you in the future have a blessed day bye-bye